Hey, how's it going? Jossie here, back with another Disc Priest Guide. This time we're looking at the big boy himself, Sardanathrius. Definitely my favorite fight in all of Castle Nathria, uh, and really, really good for Disc Priest as well. Um, so in this video, we're going to be looking into the logs uh, to see where we want to put out our spear shells, get that all planned out ahead of time. We're going to be looking at uh, the replay, going over it in real time to you know, see my thought process during each step and kind of going over the fight in detail. Um, we're looking at this fight in particular here, where I did get um, this 90 par 7000 HPS. It's definitely a very hard fight, um, so don't feel bad if your HPS is not that high because it's more important to do the mechanics here um, and not die than it is to just pump out numbers. Alright, let's jump right into it. First thing we're going to do here is we're going to go into this damage taken chart. Um, so. What we're going to do actually, we're going to split this into three sections, one for each phase. Uh, each phase in Sergeant Athreus is drastically different from the other ones, so essentially it's like three different fights here, um, and that's how we're going to plan out our spirit shells. Okay, so starting with phase one, um, this block over here, this is where we're falling down the tube. Um, so in the first phase, what we want to do is we want to plan around blood price here. Um, Blood Price is the one where he picks you all up and uh, knocks you away, does raid-wide damage based on how many people share the same amount of stacks as you do. Don't worry too much about the stacks, just do whatever your raid here tells you to, right? Um, hopefully they have a good plan to make sure that, you know, maybe half the raid has the same amount of stacks as you, so you don't take too much damage. You see here that in P1 for this fight, we only got two Blood Prices. Most of the time you will get three if your damage is not, um, I like guess, really, really high overall. But it's it's fine, it's gonna line up anyways. So there are a couple of reasons we want to use spear shells on blood price. First of all, it is one big chunk of raid damage. You see 15,000 here, 15,000 here. This was because we had good splits on um, the the stacks. Um, and so it comes all at once, which is perfect for spear shell. You can wrap ahead of time. And also they're just about one minute apart, which is just a cooldown on spear shell. The third one is gonna be the same timing. Um, one thing to note is actually there, about, I think, 57 seconds apart, right? So it kind of desyncs with your spirit shell. So what you have to do is you have to use spirit shell earlier on the first one, and then this one you'll be three seconds behind, this one you'll be three seconds behind. In the end, you'll still be able to catch, like, um, the bulk of your spirit shell with, with mind games and schism for your atonements. But for the last one, your spirit shell is going to be a bit smaller um, because you won't have the full 10 seconds. But that means you really have to start really early for the first spirit shell. So we see that first uh, blood price is at 19 seconds. That means we're going to start ramping actually even before the fight starts based on the pull timer. And then every minute after that, every 50 seconds after that, we're going to start another spear shell immediately. You need to ramp immediately so you catch the blood prices. Um, and yeah, if you do it right, you'll be able to get all three of these under spear shell. Okay, next we look at P2. Um, so after the, the last blood price in P1, there's a whole thing where you get to walk to the middle, you do the falling animation, and then uh, during all that time, you're waiting for your, you know, spirit to come back up. And the moment you come down and you walk a bit towards the Nathrius, what's going to happen is the ads are going to spot. So the ads here, they do this um, raid white dot called Crimson Chorus, right? So each ad that's alive, and I think there's four or eight at the start, right? Um, each ad that's alive just does taking damage, and you see as you kill the ads, they do less and less damage. And then here, they spawn another set, and you kill them, do less and less damage. And then, once again, we killed it a bit early, um, but there would be a third set here if you don't push him through the pit face really early. Um, each of these ad spawns are a bit more than a minute apart. You see this one is 245, and this one is 407. So actually, you're your cooldown for special is going to be up by here, which means you got a bit of downtime, you got to wait for it, and then you can start ramping and hit up another big spirit shell here. So in P2, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to spirit shell the moment each of the new sets of ads spawn. And as opposed to P1, you actually have some leeway here where you're going to be waiting a bit before using it. Finally, we get into P3. P3 is this section here right before Hero. Um, it's, it's a big chunk of the fight more than you'd think it would be like 40% of the fight. Um, P3, there's a lot of movement and kind of like spot healing required just based on who gets the uh, Fate of Finesse and stuff and you know, 
this priest has a lot of trouble healing while moving, right? So like you can't cast Radiance, you can't cast Schism Mind Games. Um, and it's so important to go run into all the orbs and soak them um, that it's going to mess up your ramps. Honestly, P3 is really hard to do properly. Like you can play the parse, but you're better off just like healing less and getting more of those soaks in. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of damage going up just randomly from all sorts of things uh, in P3. Um, it's going to be okay to just spear shell off cooldown, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to kind of use it at the very start to hit the first hand of destruction. Um, and then afterwards, we just use it every cooldown. There's always going to be damage going out for you to absorb a spear shell, and you get value that way. In terms of barrier planning, so barrier, um, in my opinion at least, always needs to be used on that first hand of destruction in P3. That part is so dangerous where uh, he spawns the uh, orb soaks from Fight of Finesse, and then he immediately pulls you in for hand, so people are not ready to soak it right away. Um, you need everyone soaking as, as early as possible, as much as possible, and then you need to put down your dome for the uh, explosion of hand destruction. Um, I would say this area is where like so many fights wipe immediately, um, and this is like it's it's so essential to get your dome down here. Um, if we look at the timings for that, it's around five minutes in. That means we only get one dome before that, and it would have to be in P1 because if you use any or P2, it won't be ready by then. So in P1, um, you're already spear shelling all of the blood prices. So just stick a barrier wherever your team doesn't have like big cooldowns, like maybe on one of the cleansing paints on one of the ads that has maybe more ads than usual. Um, kind of use your own judgment for that, but yeah. Definitely have it for for this for this first hand of destruction here. Pain suppression. Um, I've noticed that in P2, whenever you're moving through the mirror, there's a lot of uh, movement and chaos, and sometimes the tanks get chunked really hard there by the boss, uh, especially if they don't swap right away when they're supposed to with Ramonia. Um, I would say pain suppress for P2. Kind of use it like you see a tank drops really low during a transition where you're going through the mirrors, and you can't heal because you know or no one can heal because they're all running around and trying not to die. That's when you can throw out a Pain Suppress to try to keep them alive. It's also good in P3 if you didn't have to use it in P2. Um, in P3, the boss just hits really hard with uh, the sword. Um, yeah, and once again, there are parts where there's a lot of movement going on. The healers maybe can't focus too much on the tanks. Um, yeah, just kind of use it at your own discretion to try to save the tank when they're getting hit too hard by melees. All right, well, we got our spear shells, uh, barriers, everything planned out. Um, let's go into the replay to see it actually happen. Okay, here we are. So you see at the start, around five seconds on the pull timer, four seconds, I'm going to start ramping for that first blood price. You see blood price one is coming in 17 seconds. That means we should have already started ramping. One, one small trick you can do here, you see, is that um, I know that for my raid, groups 1 and 3 are in the first cleansing pain. So that's who I'm throwing up my power shields on, and then Radiance goes on everybody else. Do my regular ramp, Schism Mind Games, Mind Blast Penance, etc. There you go. And the first Blood Price comes out. Just on time, uh, the mind games or the spear shell absorb is actually over, so everyone just has the residual shield left. And you see, yeah, it's just massive 15k HPS. Everyone is very, very healthy. Uh, next damage is coming out, but you know, everyone else can just, other heroes can top everyone off from here. Always make sure you soak the 900s, of course, do your mechanics. Um, Priest is a class that's very slow. You don't really have any good movement abilities except for like body and soul. So make sure you move early for this so you don't get hit by the Ravage. Um, yeah, some classes have a better time so they can afford to stay longer. But for you, you got to move a bit quicker. All right, once again, so I'm starting ramp even before Spirit Shells off cooldown because you need to use it immediately. You see this blood price? Um, we only have 13 seconds uh, and we're starting ramping and the other one, the first blood price we had like 20 seconds because they're not exactly one minute apart, they're a bit less than one minute. So yeah, just make sure on phase one, it's a little tricky to do, but you got to use spear shell 
very early on the first one and immediately off cooldown on the next two. So you'll see here actually, okay. So earlier I did say, of course, you have to focus on mechanics. You have to, you know, switch to 900s. But um, during ramp for this priest, uh, it might be better to <laughs> kind of ignore the mechanic and just get your full ramp out because the blood price really, really hurts if you don't um, spirit shell it properly. Uh, <laughs> don't tell your raid leader I told you to do this, but I mean, there's a lot of players. You don't need exactly everybody to soak 900. The more, the better, of course. Uh, just to be safe but as a disc priest you know maybe you gotta make that trade off there you go our second ramp is up blood parts is going out we're already finished shielding perfect everyone's pretty healthy make sure you get hit by all the cleansing pains that you're supposed to um, see, after the second cleansing pain on each area, you can start moving ahead of time. Start moving, yeah, towards the next area so you don't get left behind. Here we are. So, you see, my, my spirit shots come on off cooldown soon. Uh, blood price is coming, number 3 is coming in 40 seconds, so I would start ramping now for the next blood price. But um, our team has high enough damage to be able to push P2 uh, at 70.5% before the blood price comes out. So we're going to skip the next blood price. Yeah, you see our damage is actually, <laughs> you see our damage is actually a little short, right? Like, you, uh, the best case is you push him as he's casting. Um, cleansing pain that way these echoes don't just blast you guys I mean, we got hit really really low here because we, we could ignore the ads and we tried to push him um, luckily nobody died very lucky look at this guy dropping out like 1% here um, but yeah um, anyways though if we didn't push him through that there would be a, a blood price coming up after that which we would have spear show ready for alright and that's phase 1 Phase 2 starts, um, right at the start of Phase 2, the ads are going to spawn a couple seconds in and we're going to start ramping immediately the moment we come down. Yeah, so you see the ads are up, uh, they're casting Crimson Chorus, this is just raid-wide damage to everybody. Um, we're going to PI ourselves as well, which lines up for this, so we're going to get everyone shielded up, ramp, Spear Shell, Schism Mind Games, put a big shield on everybody. Now, phase two, phase two is where um, you can't ignore mechanics because this thing here, the circles, the crescendos, and massacres are all gonna one shot you. Um, so obviously, it's, no matter what, it's not worth trading out for getting getting one shot. So yeah, do your mechanics very important. Um, one thing to note, you see the tanks um, in P two take a lot of damage. Uh, you need to make sure. That you're keeping close watch on your tanks uh outside of your ramp window of course right outside of a spirit shell but basically even if they're like keep atonement on both of them but also just throw a shadow man their way or a shield their way whenever like they're like kind of getting low ish it's gonna help out a lot if everyone every healer does that whenever you move through the mirror and pales coming out throw up shields on them so that you can heal them with uh atonements And uh, another important thing that I didn't learn until later is that when you get hit by Impale, make sure you move immediately. It leaves a little red pool under you that does a lot of damage. There you go, focus on dodging the Massacres. Yeah, during Massacre, you see I, I basically don't even heal. I kind of just focus on surviving. Um, there's no other damage going out during then anyways. Dodge the Crescendos, move between here. Okay, so... After the second hand destruction here, um, <clears throat> the next set of adds is about to spawn. It lines up right with our spear shield. has been up for a couple seconds now, but we're going to be saving it until this point here. There you go, adds are up. Double ratings is out, spear shield is out, and we put up our shields. Keep watching for crescendos, keep watching for the impales. 
massacre. Yeah, just make sure you're dodging everything here. It takes a bit of practice. Um, it's not that hard if you just focus on actually dodging. Like, see, I'm just doing some damage. People are taking damage, but I'm not going to heal them because you got to focus on keeping your tanks up and also on not getting hit by anything. I get impale. Now I see normally here after this impale, um, we would actually so the next set of ads is about to spawn soon. We would actually start moving our raid uh, here on the map here towards the other side where the two sets of ads are gonna spawn. But when you push him to forty percent, then of course he enters P three right away, and we're able to skip that set of ads and go right into P three. And here we go. We did leave one ad up, so we're gonna burn them down real quick. Okay, so this part is the hard part. So you see the very start of P3, there's Shattering Pain knock you back, there's the three Fatal Finesses. So these three Fatal Finesses come out, and we need to soak these immediately, right? So regardless of anything else, so you see I'm in the middle of my ramp right now, but I'm still going to just run towards these circles. Yeah, because there's a hand right after. And what this does is because of that hand that comes right after these things come out, you can't soak them, you cannot get pulled away, right? So you gotta soak them as much as you can before the hand comes out, and after the hand comes out, you gotta keep soaking them, right? You're so close to the hand, this is when barrier comes down because that explosion just chunks you so, so hard. You can see here, some people had this barrier and they're like so, so low, like definitely would have died without it. Just, yeah, put down your barrier on top of the Fatal Finesse, that way people can soak it safely and also survive the hand destruction. After that we get hero, there's no damage really, so <clears throat> we'll just be doing our damage here. Use our mini ramp, but everyone's already full life, so that was kind of wasted to be honest. Um, there's a section here, unfortunately it does line up with hero, but there's a section here right before the Ravage where there's a lot of downtime. This is where I recommend getting your drink in, Spiritual Clarity. See I'm drinking here and then I, I ahead of time I step out of where the Ravage is going to be, where the whole raid is, and that way... Um, yeah, we can just sit and drink while he's casting Ravage. Then there's more of these. Fade of Finesse. Make sure you put it in the right spot. Don't worry about people getting hit by it. It's their job to get out of your circle. And then just soak. More important than anything because when these orbs, if they don't get soaked and they blow up, they do so much more damage than you can heal. It's more important to just soak these up even if you have to like run around and just like power shield and can't really soak anything. Can't really heal anything, it's fine. This part as well, there's a massacre during the fit of finesse. We're just gonna dodge the massacre, but still get into his orb soak as soon as possible. You see, I'm not doing that much healing actually um, during this part. I'm kind of just doing the mechanics. Another hand of destruction, just gonna be a big chunk of damage. People are hurt, but yeah, still get into your circle to soak first and then start healing people. It's it's really messy to be honest. Um this whole fight is this whole phase three is really like uh taxing on your movement. And it's really hard for this priest to heal through, but you're just gonna have to do your best. You see my radius keeps getting um, interrupted and everything. It, it hurts. I cast a spear shell here. Uh, I cast spear shell and it basically cast no damage afterwards. So none of these guys are really getting any shielding. It, it just, yeah, it was really unfortunate um, that it worked out this way. But yeah, just heal what you can. And there we go, boss is down. So we did skip one extra massacre though. There would have been a massacre with those orbs where you should soak the orbs as much as you can ahead of time so that they don't overlap the massacre. And that way you don't get like blocked out of them from the massacre lines if they're overlapping. We did mess up our last spirit shell there uh, just because we didn't have enough time to, to stand and cast. Um, it's going to happen during P3. Just kind of do the best that you can, keep people alive. If some people die, it's 
it's kind of okay. There's there is a damage check here, so um, yeah, it kind of depends on the damage of your raid. And yeah, that's the whole fight. Okay, so back to the logs. Let's look at our healing and what we did. Uh, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spear shells. Last one being a lot smaller because I didn't actually get to spear shell properly. Um, these first two are the blood prices. Looks like they went really, really well, hitting around 20k HPS for each of these. That's about as uh, as high as the spear shell would go with with my gear. Um, and then you have these ones on the ad spawns, which have been which were really good as well. And then this one on the first hand, this one just whenever, and this one just whenever as well. You can see the fight is 7 minutes and 40 seconds. Uh, oftentimes it's long now, like around 8 minutes, um, which is when approximately when the array enrages. So it's a really, really long fight, and you need to focus really hard for the whole thing. Um, there's so many points where you just get one shot, and that, yeah, you really, you really can't lose focus on the whole thing, and that's the hard part of it. Um, P1 is very, very strict on your spear shot timings. If you're even off by like a second, for the second and third ones, you're going to miss a whole big chunk of your healing. Phase 2 is not as bad, um, just focus on surviving. And phase 3, when it's so hectic, just focus on, you know, absorbing the orbs. Try the best to get the big spear shells out there, but uh, that part is actually not as healing intensive as maybe some of the other phases are. Assuming that the rest of your raid uh, <laughs> does, the, does the hand and the orbs right. If we go to look at our bear usage, <clears throat> we used it right on the first hand of destruction here. Um, we I didn't actually use it uh, in P1. I really should have. Like if this came out around five minutes, then obviously the first two minutes would have been safe to use barrier. And there's a lot of damage going out here with the cleansing pain and stuff. Um, so that's just a small mistake there. But we have a lot of pulls on this. Um, and in P1 we were doing fine, like with our other healers healing the the leftovers from <laughs> Spirit Show. So. Um, yeah, I wasn't too focused on making sure to get the most value out of barrier. We go to look at the deaths. Um, is there anything we could have helped them with? Massacre is a one shot, so nothing you could do here. Um, Tank died from scorn, shattering pain, coming the chorus. So this is definitely a healer issue. Um, this is just yeah over twenty seconds. I mean, scorn is the the tank dot. This is P three, so probably should have just. <clears throat> Make sure he's topped off before the Shattering Pain. Um, just put a bit more focus spot healing into him. These two died from stacking their Fatal Finesse. Nothing we could have done there. These guys died to Hand of Destruction, probably because they were soaking, I, I would assume, um, and just ended up too close. Uh, in the end, sections here around 7 minutes in, it just gets really hectic. You might not be able to keep everyone alive, but honestly, like a bit more healing probably could have, have saved these guys. A bit more focus on picking up the people who are really, really low going into the hand of destruction and that's all there is to it it's it's a really hard fight but honestly it's all up to up to your own control here like if you die in this fight yeah, it's probably your own fault um yeah you just gotta make sure you stay focused the whole seven eight minute fight make sure you don't miss any spear shells and you'll get big hps numbers um hopefully you guys learn a lot from this video hopefully you go out and get your aotc after this like and subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.